Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post now tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you do not miss out on future videos and giveaways. Getting right into today's video, I did want to give a quick little shout out to one of my members, Diana. She gave me the bright idea of doing Beetlejuice nails and I've never done them before, so I was super excited when I read her comment. So huge shout out to her. Now getting into today's video, I am starting off with a pre-prep practice hand. I did pre-apply my tips from Not Polished. These are the C-curve tips and I trimmed them very, very lightly. As you can tell, they are very long. So we're starting off by applying our acrylic on the pinky. This color is called Ice Queen from Not Polish. Along with that, I'm using the acrylic brush from Not Polish as well. It is their size 12 brush and their acrylic monomer. Now, when I'm doing nail art or nail designs, I like to use my acrylic to my advantage. So depending on what design I'm going to do on which finger is basically how I decide what color acrylic I'm going to be laying. Now for the pinky, I am going to be doing the striped black and white. So I basically choose either black or white to go on as my base acrylic. And then I will create the nail art depending on which color I choose. So each nail is going to be different for today's video. And I will explain my reasoning behind that. So for the ring finger, we are using this really pretty purple glitter from Not Polish. This one is called Purple Kisses. It is so pretty, super, super glittery. And I am going to be using this kind of as an accent nail as I'm going to be sugaring some glitter over top as well. So whenever I'm doing sugaring, I prefer to do the exact same glitter or something close or even just the color underneath. And then I will sugar the glitter on top just in case that nail gets any chipping or any damage to it. There is still a base that is not going to create an ugly effect on the design. So always remember when sugaring, try to use the same color as the base. I'm quickly applying that on the nail in a very thin layer. I basically am going to be encapsulating this set of nails. So I like to create my base very thin and then I just encapsulate with clear and make the thickness that I need for that length of nail. And as you can see, it's very, very pigmented or I guess I should say the glitter to powder ratio is definitely amazing. <laughs> there is no area that is not covered by glitter, which is what you want when you have a glitter acrylic mix. For the middle finger, I am using Cosmo from Not Polish. It is a really pretty deep purple with gray undertones. I'm obsessed with this color. It's really pretty perfect for some dark set of nails. And I figured I would place this as my background color so that it complements our character very well. His face is going to be purple. So I wanted something that will let him stand out and I figured this would be the perfect color while it also ties into the rest of the nails. So I'm going to be applying that from the tip going up towards the cuticle area. That's kind of how I like to apply my acrylic again in a thin layer so that I can encapsulate afterwards and add the thickness with the clear acrylic.
for our index finger, I chose black. This is also from Not Polish. I am going to be applying that so that the words stand out very nicely. Taking a medium sized bead of acrylic, applying that in the center, quickly working with the product, basically tapping it downward towards the tip, making sure that it's not spilling on the sides while also cleaning up those sides. You wanna make sure that you are keeping your shape nice and perfect so that you don't get tons of overflow and have to file a ton at the end. I'm gonna go ahead and finish that application. Very simple and thin. Now, a quick little tip on how I like to work with black acrylic is in small sections. I prefer to do this, especially around the cuticle area or near the skin because it can get messy and sometimes I should say a lot of the times the black will be really hard to remove after it has stained the skin or gotten in that cuticle area so I rather avoid it at all costs so always make sure you work very very carefully around that cuticle area especially when working with black acrylic. Now we are going to be encapsulating, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I am using clear acrylic from Not Polish, and I'm basically going to be adding the thickness to that nail that I desire or my client would desire. Of course, this is a practice hand, so I'm basically making them a little bit thinner than I usually would as I want to focus on our nail art for today's video. So I'm going to go ahead and encapsulate these nails very quickly. Same process throughout the rest of the set, carefully applying that acrylic. Once everything is nice and dry, I am going in with my filing process. For today's video, I am using the Unicorn Drill from Kiara Sky. It is their rechargeable e-file. Along with that, I'm using their 5-in-1 Bit and Rose Gold in medium grip, but they also have tons of different options on their website. I do have my speed at about 9 to 10,000 RPMs, and I'm just going to very quickly, very lightly file the surface of the nail. I do try to focus on my acrylic application and make sure that it is as smooth as I can get it so that when I go in and file, it is very minimal. So I do recommend you guys get your application nice and perfect so that it is a time saver. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails.
Now once I'm done with my e-file, I'm going in with my hand file. This is a Tammy Taylor peel and stick file. And I am going in and filing the sides, making sure that everything is nice and straight. Now, as mentioned earlier, I try to focus on my acrylic application and cleaning up those sides so that the shape does not get messed up. However, you still get a little bit of bulkiness added to those sides, so you wanna make sure and file at the end and make them nice and straight to your liking. And of course, if you're familiar with my videos, you will note that I always recommend you flip the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective. This is going to help you find any imperfections that the client might see that you might not see from your view. Now at this point, I like to file that tip so that it is nice and squared, and I will assess the entire nail to make sure that everything looks perfect. And if I need to fix anything, I do it at this point. Now, because we are going to be doing tons of nail art, I do recommend to buff the surface of the nail. This will create the perfect canvas for your nail art. I'm going in with my sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage. It is my all-time favorite, so definitely recommend you guys purchase these if you need any buffers. Now taking a lint-free wipe and some Young Nail Swipe, I'm going to be cleaning the surface of the nail and my practice hand. If you do not have Swipe, you can always use a little bit of alcohol. That works really well. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure everything is nice and clean. Now we are sharing the Not Polished Gel Liner Kit. I'm so excited, you guys. Amazing products. I get so excited for and this is one of them not only does it come with a ton of colors but it also comes with some extra brushes just in case you mess yours up which is such a nice added little touch to the kit so i'm not going to be swatching these colors for you guys but i am using a good amount of them in today's video so you'll be able to see them in action i am starting off with a pinky very simple striped design i'm using the black gel liner for that making a line very carefully I am stabilizing my hand with my pinky on my nail, as you can see. And I always do that. I feel like I get better control of my nail art whenever I do that. So always remember, if you are having issues, try to stabilize it however you feel comfortable. And with me, it's just with my pinky. So I'm going to be doing three stripes down that nail. You can always make them thicker. You can add more, but because the pinky is so skinny, I figured I would just do three. Now remember to cure your nail art whenever you feel it is necessary. I did go ahead and cure the pinky as I didn't know what nail I was going to do first. So I just wanted to make sure it was frozen in place and I wasn't going to mess it up. My baby girl was hungry, so I figured I would get the more simple designs out of the way feed her and then we would come back with the intricate nail art so we are going to be writing beetlejuice on the index finger and for that i am using the white gel liner from that same kit and i'm trying to mimic the font from the movie so it's kind of like a staggered lettering if that makes sense as you can kind of see as i'm doing it on the nail and I'm not trying to be super clean with the details either because that kind of is the vibe on the movie as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish writing that out as best as possible.
Now we are going to be sprinkling some lime green acrylic on top to tie the design together. The gel is still wet. It is important that you note that it is still wet. I am pouring this powder over top, kind of shaking it off and then we're curing it in the light. So you will see the mess that I created. I'm just kind of cleaning it off again with a lint-free wipe and some swipe. But I basically used that lime green to create lime green lettering. I did not have a lime green liner in that kit. So easy peasy fixed with their powder. Now I'm going to be doing some nail art on the middle finger. I'm so excited. I have not done intricate nail art in a long time. So I was really excited to share this with you guys. I am starting off by mixing their purple paint with white and I'm basically just mixing it to my liking, nothing specific. I'm taking their liner brush as well and just using that to mix it and this is going to be used for the skin tone of the face. And then I'm just adding the other colors that I'm going to be using on that same design and have them ready for whenever I need them. Now when it comes to nail art and drawing characters, I tackle each character differently just depending on the amount of detail, the shapes, and everything that goes into it. So whenever I searched up an image, it was a little tricky. <laughs> so I figured the best way to tackle this guy would be drawing the head and then going from there. Because of the shaping and all of that, I figured that would be my best route. Of course, always kind of play with your characters, the shapes, and figure out what works best for you. It was a little bit tricky, I'm not even gonna lie. I kind of overthought it more than I should have. But once I got that base shape, it was so smooth. So always kind of play with your options and see what is gonna make your life easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by doing just that and doing the head with the light purple color that I mixed. Again, using the gel liner kit, the purple one and the white one. I'm gonna go ahead and infill the areas and then continue to draw the top of the head very very carefully again stabilizing my hand with my pinky all i see is blessings got no time for stressing don't believe in failures in my life it's only lessons they just make a room for what i'm on now i don't got a clue but i know the one who does know how oh wow like I'm learning the game with the maker I already know now. Destiny has my name, no, it's coming, it'll never go. I know that we all gonna be alright. We gon' make it through if it takes us all night. No matter what the odds may bring our way, I can see the blessings coming our way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blessings on blessings, yeah. I can see the blessings coming our way. Now I am curing in the light before we go in with the next step. You want to make sure you are curing, especially when you're going to be layering different colors over top of each other. You don't want everything to smudge together. It's not going to look cute. You're going to be upset and I would be upset for you as well. So I did cure it in the light for a full round and now I'm going in with the black color and drawing in the details. We're starting off at the eye area. It was very strong details, so I figured I would go ahead and start there and make sure that I kind of proportioned everything properly. So we're doing 
the eye area and then I'm going to be quickly outlining the entire head. This helps kind of just bring everything together whenever you outline drawings like this. And then adding some creases and then we're going to be drawing in the rest of the details. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys watch that. And I'm basically working my way down. Break me for the glory of the Lord. Okay, not only does he hold me when I'm down and feel I'm folding. He my coach when I'm the gold. He never lonely. Got that hope and he who holy, holy, holy. Keep that rugged cross all on me. Need that spirit to control me. Seek that word to come and mold me. Yeah. yeah. It's like I can feel the blessings coming my way. Yeah. It's like I can feel the blessings coming my way. It's too late now to turn around and back again I made my bed and now I lay my head in it And I'm sorry I'm not perfect but I knew that I wouldn't be I guess it's for the best you know the worst Now, whenever I'm basically sketching the outline of a design or something like that, I want to make sure that it's still wet so that if I need to move anything, if I need to change anything, I can still do that. So I'm taking a cleaning brush with some swipe and I'm basically just erasing the area that I'm not content with. So that reason was because I just felt like it was a little too high and he didn't have enough mouth if that makes sense. So all I did was kind of scoot everything down towards the neck. And you have to be okay with erasing certain areas and fixing it. I feel like sometimes details like that can make or break a design. So you wanna make sure you have the ability to fix it. I'm gonna clean up certain little details. And then of course, we're gonna fill in any areas that have black as well. I want to make sure I go ahead and use the black as much as possible and get it all done with in the areas that they need to be. Now again, once I'm done with that black, I am curing it so I can go in freely with the other colors. I mixed a little bit of the purple with some black to just deepen it up and use that around the eyes. It is a deeper purple and I wanted to make sure I tried to match that as best as possible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and infill that area. The nice thing about outlining and then going in with the color is that it almost creates a barrier so that the gel paint does not overflow if that makes sense. If you ever create nail art like this, you will understand what I'm talking about, but it basically is like a little ridge that stops it from going anywhere else, but the area that you are painting on. Now, because we have that little outline, I'm going in directly with the yellow and infilling the eyes, and then we're gonna be curing in the light again once I feel like I need to do so. we're going to be doing the hair and if you notice that I like to do kind of a sketching motion 
with small strokes versus just going in and drawing. It is my comfort zone. I feel like it helps tremendously too that you're working in smaller sections versus just going in and doing one big line. You have better control of your brush in that motion. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the hair kind of working my way up and adding the tiny little details with this brush. I went ahead and cured that in the light. Now I'm going in and outlining the hair as well. Again, it just helps it pop and makes it all come together. I did very quickly mix the yellow paint with a little bit of the green to kind of give a lighter green color and that is going to work as our teeth so I'm just doing the smallest teeth that you could ever think of and I'm using the black to my advantage so instead of having to outline every single little detail I am leaving a tiny space in between those teeth so that I don't have to outline anything but underneath it to kind of square them off. So 
I'm going to go ahead and finish drawing those and then again I want to cure in the light before I go in with my black again. Once that green is cured, I am going in with black and adding the little detail. So I'm outlining that first and second tooth and then the rest of them, I'm just lining the bottom to give more of that squirt effect. Now using that light purple color that I mixed, I'm basically using that as an eraser to kind of separate those two lines from the nose, curing that in the light, making sure that everything is nice and dry before we move on. Now I'm using the lime green color that I used for the Beetlejuice words as our slime color. For that I'm using my 3D nail art brush from Amazon. You can find it on my Amazon storefront. I'm taking a bead of acrylic, placing it where I want the end of my drip to be, and then just lightly, very lightly dragging that upwards. It's gonna create the easiest drip effect. Of course, you wanna work with the wetter bead if you are a beginner nail tech and have not worked with 3D nail art. Definitely recommend try working with the wet bead. So much easier. And then I'm just going to be adding some more acrylic up at the top near the cuticle area to kind of tie everything together and make it look like it's coming out of the cuticle. And then of course I'm just adding a little bit more product kind of to darken up certain areas where you can still see the black coming through. Now for our top coat, I am going to be doing a combination of matte and shiny. So for the background of this nail, I am doing matte it from Not Polish. And I'm going to also be adding that onto our middle and index finger. Of course, curing that in the light for a full minute. I like to do two minutes just to be safe. Once everything is out of the light and everything is nice and mattified, I'm going in with Gloss It. I am adding that onto the pinky. And I'm using a 3D nail art brush for this. Sometimes the brush that the polish comes with can be a little bit thick, so I wanna make sure I am only getting it on the desired areas. And now for the ring finger, we are going to be sugaring some glitter as mentioned earlier. So I am adding gloss it as well. And while it's still wet, we are going to be sprinkling on raw purple glitter. So you wanna make sure it is still wet to do this successfully. And of course you wanna cure this in the light for a full minute. I like to do two minutes, but that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.